Um, actually, our guest speaker today, she really does need no introduction. We have her bio in the program. Uh, you should recognize her because for 20 years, she came into our living rooms, our kitchens, our family rooms, and she graced our TVs as she told us the events that were going on in our communities. And she really, I think, became a lot of people's families. Today, we're asking her to come and share a bit. Um, she's a terrific lady. I get to call her a friend, and, and these days now I get to call her a colleague. Uh, she does some work with us. So Chris, come on up, and I want to do one thing for you as you come up. Bow in prayer with me for just one moment. Lord, as Chris comes to speak to us, we just pray that the words of her mouth and the meditation of each and every heart in this room, we pray that they would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, I'm glad he did that because on this National Day of Prayer, and truth be known, even if it wasn't the National Day of Prayer, I'd be up here saying that prayer in my head. Please let me say something that people will take away from here today and be inspired by. You know the power of prayer in this room, right? We learn it when we're young, like little Johnny learned it. When his dad said to him one day, Johnny, I know you've been asking me for a baby brother. And he said, Dad, I so want a baby brother. He was about five years old. And his dad said, I want you to pray for that baby brother every day for two months. And let's see what happens. So Johnny, he prays. He's praying every day and about four weeks pass and he starts asking some questions about where baby brothers come from and he's thinking to himself, this ain't gonna happen in two months. <laughs> and all of a sudden, so he stops praying. He's got about four weeks in. About a month later, his dad said, Johnny, come in here, I want you to see something. And he goes into his parents' bedroom, and there is his mom with not one baby brother, but two. And Johnny looks at those bundles, and he says, these are my brothers? And he said, yes, son, see what happens when you have faith and pray? And Johnny said, Dad, aren't you glad I stopped when I did? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you can even Google prayer jokes on the internet, right? <laughs> and I like to use humor in my daily life, although there is a lot that's very serious about this day. Think back to your very earliest memories of praying when you were little Johnny's age, when you were younger than Johnny. Maybe two or three years old when your parents started to teach you what it meant to pray, right? Maybe by the dinner table, maybe kneeling by your bed at night. And as a child, many of us memorized those scripted pair, prayers that our parents taught us. I know my parents didn't need to teach, mean to teach me this, but as a child, I always kind of thought that prayer was really for two things. You either prayed to say thanks, like around the dinner table, or you prayed because you needed something or wanted something, you were asking him for something, right? And you were supposed to say thanks for things like your food and your home, your loving family. It's a little tougher to learn about the asking. You kind of know as a kid you're not really supposed to ask for that bright, shiny bicycle for Christmas, right? But it's a little hard not to sneak that into the prayer when you're young. And if we're not careful as adults, we can fall back into those same habits, if you think about it. We're giving thanks only at the dinner table or asking for strength when we're going through trying times, praying, communicating with our Father in Heaven when we need something from Him. I will never forget one day in high school, I was in a journalism class and my teacher told us that she wanted us for two minutes to just sit and listen. So we did for two minutes. And then we were supposed to write a paragraph about what we heard in the silence. And I said something deep about the 
blackness of the sound when there is nothing there and somebody else talked about the whir of the heater coming through the vents that they heard or a scream outside the classroom as somebody was running down the hall and being boisterous. And I'll never forget the answer that one of my classmates gave when she was asked what she heard. She wrote that she heard God. And I thought, what? You heard God? How did I not hear him? And I never forgot that, although I never really truly understood it until I got older. If we truly listen, if we are in the practice of communicating and listening with God, we can hear him, and we do every day. As we grow, sometimes we can let the hustle bustle of our lives get in the way of our relationship with God. Maybe in college, we're too tired to get up on a Sunday morning and go to church, right? So we say, oh, it's not gonna hurt me. Maybe we don't think it's cool. We get out of the habit of going to our services and even praying on a regular basis, right? Our busy jobs lead us down a different path. We know it's out there somewhere, but we're not really in the habit of practicing it. We might even say, someday I'll start going to church, someday I'll start praying again. Well, guess what? Someday is not a real day. It's not like Monday or Tuesday. It's just someday. And it's not specific. It's out there somewhere in our lives. So how do we come proficient as at prayer? our conversations with our Father in Heaven. Years ago, researcher Eric Anders found that it takes an average of 10,000 hours of focused practice to become expert at anything. 10,000 hours. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Outliers where he gives examples of this mastery in The Beatles, Bill Gates, elite athletes, elite musicians, 10,000 hours. So that means if you spend one hour every day doing something, focused, practicing, it will take you nearly 30 years to become an expert at that thing. 30 years. How many of us can say that we are experts at prayer? Right? We certainly don't spend an hour a day, probably most of us, practicing that and becoming an expert at prayer. But the good thing is, it's never too late to start on a prayer journey and to practice and become a master. In his book, The Marshmallow Test, Walter Mischel says, as with all efforts to change long-standing patterns and learn new ones, whether playing the piano or exercising self-restraint to avoid hurting people we love, the prescription is to practice, practice, practice until it becomes automatic and intrinsically rewarding. Rewarding to us. Are you practicing prayer? The results are great. We see what I call everyday miracles all around us. They've happened to each and every one of us. Have we noticed those miracles in our lives? People who recover from terrible accidents or who beat the odds when they're diagnosed with a disease. There actually is research being done right now on the power of prayer as a healing mechanism. And they are finding that it does work although they can't put their finger on why. We ask God to keep our loved ones healthy or safe, and it happens routinely, but do we stop thinking about how miraculous that is every day in our lives? That we can get up in the morning and walk out the door and do something that we love every day and be with the people that we love every day simply because we asked God for that, and he gave it to us. When I was about 20 years old, I was at a family reunion in an area that I was not familiar with. Out in the country in Virginia, I was at, uh, my grandpa had a cabin, and I had my mom and another friend of mine in the car with me, and we are just talking and chatting, and all of a sudden I realize from here to that microphone is a stop sign that I'm about to run. 
And there was no slamming on the brakes. There was nothing. I just kept going. Something said to me, just keep going. So four lane highway out in front of me with a big grassy island in the middle. And I went through the entire intersection without stopping <laughs> and with no traffic on either side. And cried a little bit after it was over. But how grateful I was that I wasn't hurt. How grateful that I didn't hurt my family in the car or anyone else that might have been on that road. And I still think about that a lot in my life and many other things that I feel like somebody was really watching out for me. And I can say that that truly to me was a miracle in my life. I said earlier that gratitude, giving thanks, is one of the reasons that we pray every day, which is true, to give thanks. Are you practicing gratitude every day? Because even if you're not focused on prayer per se, practicing gratitude can help us build those 10,000 hours of mastery. Think about for just a moment, and you've probably seen this question posed before. What if we woke up tomorrow with only the things we thanked God for today? What would we have in our lives? There actually is research on the subject of gratitude and how it affects us. A professor named Robert Emmons did a research project and he had three groups. He had one group that he asked to write down every day for a period of time five things they were grateful for. That was the gratitude group. He had people write down five things that bothered them or disturbed them during the day. That was the hassles group. And then he had a group of people write down every day just things that happened to them. Didn't, not good or bad, just, you know, I ate lunch, I went to work, I got my car washed, those types of things. And that was the neutral group. And what they found by doing that research was truly amazing. He says, at the end of the 10 weeks, we examined differences between the three groups on all of the well-being outcomes that we measured at the outset of the study. Participants in the gratitude condition felt better about their lives as a whole and were more optimistic about the future than participants in either of the other control conditions. To put it into numbers, according to the scale that we use to calculate well-being, they were a full 25% happier than the other people in the study. Want to be 25% happier? Practice gratitude, right? Write down those five things every day that you're thankful for in your life. It's a miracle. An outcome or a side effect of us practicing prayer, practicing gratitude, is that God allows us to be 25% happier in our lives. That's something to celebrate on a national day of prayer. So I find in recent years that prayer to me is not really just kneeling down before bedtime or a prayer before a meal, but it's become for me more of an ongoing conversation with God. So you might pass me in the car and see me just um, talking out loud, very animated in the car and think that I'm singing a song or I might be talking on the phone, you know, to somebody that's listening to me on a speaker. And truly, I might just be having a conversation with the Lord. This happens very frequently now in my life. I might give thanks, I might ask for guidance, I might just ask, how are you doing today, Lord? We probably don't ask that enough, right? We wouldn't just go to our earthly fathers and ask all the time for something or, you know, thanks for the car keys or, you know, whatever. We, we would have a conversation, a relationship that we would build with him. Sometimes I ask, How's my grandpa doing? Then I listen for answers. I listen for his side of the conversation because I think back to that girl in my high school journalism class and how inspired I was by her saying, I heard God. And I listen. 
and I hear, but hearing takes practice too. And sometimes the answer is not what we want. And we have to accept that, just like we have to accept it from our earthly parents. When we practice it, when we deposit into that relationship bank account with the Lord, we are able to withdraw when we need it, right? And I am admitting to you up here today that I have been doing a lot more withdrawing than I have been depositing. In the last two months, I have lost three people who were very impactful in my life, and one of them was my best friend, Luann. When we lose people, we go through that wide range of emotions, right? We ask a lot of questions. We ask for strength to get through it. We ask for peace for their family members and their circle of influence. Sometimes we might even ask why. I've been asking a lot for the strength to not ask why. So I found myself asking for all those things as we were in the midst of losing my friend Luann. Now Luann, her name was Luann Knipe. She was the noon anchor here in Toledo, was a really amazing reporter here um, when I first came to town 22 years ago. She and I um, hit it off immediately. We not only were co-workers, we lived together, we were roommates. This is the greatest thing when you live with a great friend, especially I think when you're female because we would go grocery shopping for each other. If my pantyhose had a run in it, I could go to her drawer and get a new pair out. One time I came home and there was a brand new bathing suit sitting on the bed. And I worked the night shift and she worked the day shift, so she was already asleep, but there was a little note that said, um, I saw this at TJ Maxx and just thought it would look so cute on you. <laughs> so this is what it's like, right, to, um, to have an amazing friend. We shared weddings, we shared babies. Um, in fact, at my wedding, Luann gave a toast and reminded my husband that I was her wife first <laughs> before I was his. We shared a lot. We went on vacations together. We were very good friends. So that news hit me hard. Luann had cancer. She was initially diagnosed with breast cancer about two years ago, and then it spread to other places, but she was treated she was still being treated and she was feeling really well and doing really well. Uh, I talked to her on a Tuesday. We had a lengthy conversation. And on Thursday morning, before a class I was teaching, her sister called me from Washington, D.C., where she lives, and said, Luann's in the hospital and I don't think she's going to make it. And my mind was blown. I just talked to her on Tuesday. We had a lengthy conversation. She was doing great. She was going to Chet's baseball game in the afternoon. She has an eight-year-old son named Chet. She said she started feeling like she was getting the flu yesterday, and this morning we brought her here, and I don't think she's going to make it out, Chris. I think you need to get here. So I got in the car and drove to D.C., spent several days there with her, and I learned a lot about faith. Lou was not really vocal about it. She did have a strong belief in the Lord, though. And during those last days, when she didn't have the strength to do anything else, and the pastor would come in to sit down and pray with her, she somehow found the strength to recite the Lord's Prayer with him, word for word, clear as a bell as she was transitioning from this world to the next. She passed away on Good Friday. I don't think that was a mistake on her part. So I go back again to she was doing well. She was feeling fine on Tuesday. She went to the hospital and never came home. Think about the fragility of our lives. What would you do if you were told that you had 10 years to live? You might think, I always wanted to climb a mountain, or I want to visit these countries before I go, or, you know, here are things that I would really like to do and accomplish. See my daughter graduate from high school or college. 
get married? What would you do if you had 10 days to live? What if somebody told you you had 10 minutes to live? All of those things that seem really important in our lives all of a sudden are not so important anymore because when everything else is stripped away, when all we have is that DNA, that soul, that spirit, what we have left is our faith and our ability to pray. Spending those final days and hours with Lou and others in my life, I know that the answer is our faith, that the answer is our relationship with God, with our Heavenly Father, a relationship that we cultivate and grow through prayer. And it takes practice. Thanks for letting me practice up here today and for inviting me to be part of this. I'm truly honored to be here. God bless. Thank you.